Hello and welcome to Warzone, everything Call of Duty Warzone and more. My name is Alan Bryce and I'll be bringing you through all the things Warzone we have for you this week. And speaking of this week, here's a little teaser of what's to come. In Warzone news this week, we cover all the latest from Warzone competitions to what's the latest things in the game. Our top five clips of this week featuring more great clips from the Call of Duty community showcasing the very best of Warzone. Our letter highlight this week includes Dave from Team Wars. He takes us through what he likes to run in Call of Duty Warzone. And our map highlight this week, it can only be one thing. We are going to Bunker 11. Well, there you go. You can see we've got another action-packed show for you this week. And if you do fancy keeping up with the show, make sure to go on to our Twitter and, of course, our Reddit at Morezone. So make sure you click onto those. You can also submit your top five clips there, which we'll see later in the show. But before we get there, let's find out what's happened in Warzone this week. In Warzone this week, the biggest news are the bunkers that have appeared all over the map that you can now get into. There are many to choose from, but the main one people really want to go to is Bunker 11, a special bunker that can only be opened after following several steps, steps that we will cover in our map highlight later on. But it is also the place to get your hands on the legendary blueprint for the MP7. Also, at CDL Seattle, we saw the beginning of Weekend Warzone. 12 pro teams dropping into the map in a private lobby against each other. And this time, it will be Paris Legion who walk away with the win, managing to survive out all the other teams and take home the prize money. That, however, wasn't the only winning going on at CDL Seattle this weekend. We, of course, do have the Chicago Huntsman, who in a grand final did take down the London Royal Ravens, both teams having new rosters, but it will be the Huntsman that come out on top this time around and add another championship to their roster. Also new this week, Nick Merckx is running an MFAM gauntlet, a big Warzone competition featuring many streamers going head-to-head, -head, and you can watch that today. And last but not least, a new Warzone kill record has been set. Vicstar teamed up with pro players Celium, Priester, and Obizi to set a blistering 138 kills in a 135-man lobby, a record that might not be beaten anytime soon. Well, there you go. That's all the news from Warzone this week. Heavy on the competitions that have been going on. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to find out who is the best. And speaking of the best, it's time to move on now to our top five plays of the week. And of course, this one is full of great clips. First up, we have Sam C. Bizzle, ex-pro player, going to work to save his teammate. Left, 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 left. Left, we. I can see movement. Bro, you want me to the left? Last one. Let's play, baby. Play. Has been said that the Molotov is not the most effective lethal you can use. Turns out, just need an arm like a cannon. The old saying goes, work smarter, not harder. In this case, hit him with a no-look and walk away confidently. Enemy movement. Not only in that case, finding himself outmanned, but as you can see, certainly not outgunned. Oh my god! <laughs> CDL caster Merc goes to work here, and no, I don't know how he did this either. Well, there you go. There's our top five plays of this week. And if you do fancy trying to get your clip into this, make sure you submit it either by Twitter, the more zone or on our reddit r slash more zone of course we will be keeping an eye on them every single week and bringing you those clips so make sure you stay tuned well if you are wondering maybe how to get a little bit better 
at Warzone and think, well, those clips are great, but what should I be running in this one? We actually caught up with pro player for Team War. It's Day or Dequi, as it could be called, in our loadout highlight. <laughs> All right, hello, Dave. Uh, thank you for, for joining me here into the Warzone loadout highlight. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Bryce. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have you in. I'm glad to have you in. Um, so let's kind of jump straight in then to talk about your loadout because uh, you're actually running the M4 still. You know, there's been a lot of debate going on at the moment about the M4 versus the Growl. Uh, why are you sticking with the M4? Uh, for me personally, I just feel like the M4 has a bit faster time to kill. And if you have mainly recoil control attachments on it it's kind of the same as the growl like there's not much recoil at all so with faster time to kill and same recoil i, I feel like it's just a better gun to use suits my play style more that makes sense plus you know you, you know in your professional capacity you run an m4 so it probably just feels quite you know similar and normal to you i'm guessing yeah and and also i bought this uh this variant which makes a gun like a beautiful color gold and then i put the platinum <laughs> camo on it so the sights are gold but the gun's silver and it just looks gorgeous that's a that's probably the biggest reason i use it that, i'm not gonna lie to you it sounds beautiful to me i actually don't have that gun. <laughs> i don't have that loadout so uh, i'll have to i'll have to kind of dig through and have a look at yours and, and see exactly what it looks like no, I, I didn't mean to but like i bought it for you know scrims and stuff like that but yeah. you can't use variants in private match so i made a mistake but <laughs> you know well I'm, I'm sure it looks beautiful i'll go have a look straight away after this and probably put it up on screen um but, you, you know, the M4, a lot of people have been saying, you know, it's better kind of close to medium range because it hits hard. So I'm guessing that's one of the, of the big things for you. Yeah, that's what, that's what I just feel like. It's just got the fastest time to kill. I growl, you can uh, beam people from you know, far away, but, I mean, there's not real massive long-range gunfights where the growl would be more beneficial, in my opinion. Yeah, fair enough. And you've gone for fairly standard attachments, right? Like, the attachments aren't anything too out of the ordinary. Yeah, it's just what, uh, just what most people use with a, with a monolithic suppressor. Commander four grip, sixty round mags. Uh, I'm not sure what the the grip is called, but it's the one which is just recoil control. Uh -huh. And then I'm guessing grenadier barrel. Like everybody runs that. That's grenadier the... barrel, yeah, as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one of the things I did notice on your class, Dave, was uh, you run a smoke. Not a lot of people have been doing it, but how beneficial is it for you to kind of be running that as your tactical? Uh, I I just feel like it's really good uh, to use a smoke. See, when when your teammates go down in like an open field or something like that, you can pop a smoke and them revive them quickly without getting shot. At. If people can be, you know, shooting you from far and yeah, they're lighting you up and you've got to you just throw a smoke and get get away quicker. It's just it comes in handy in them type of situations where you stay alive. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I think a bit something I might actually have to try in was I'm not actually ended up running a smoke as my second. I always use a heartbeat sensor to use people, see people through walls. You've got to. You've got to. There's always people in buildings. You've got to check it before you go in. It's, it's yeah. a nightmare. Um, but you've also been telling me that you've been kind of uh, going between two classes, right? The RPG one and an overkill one with a sniper. Uh, yeah. what, what's your kind of reasoning for that? Uh I started using the RPG just because of there were so many people just chilling in buildings where there's only one way up and stuff like that. So I just got really uh, ticked off. <laughs> I'll put that on and I'll teach him a lesson, I think. And now it's got a little bit of a nerf since the past. So I've gone back to my, my sniper class and it feels it does feel a little bit easier to get double, uh, well, wins in it. So I, I do like go back and forth between two. Depends what I'm feeling. If I, if, if I want to start running people, I'll have the RPG. If I want to slow down a bit, I'll, I'll get my sniper out. Yeah, that's fair enough. I don't, I don't see any problem with that. Um, are you, your sniper, do you run a thermal or a normal sight? I use the variable zoom. Because ah, the that's what zoom. I use um, in competit competitive. Um, so it's a lot easier for me to uh, you know, adjust to it. Awesome. All right. Well, fair enough. I think I, I, I was running the thermal. I think I switched to the variable zoom. I just found that a bit... I was able to get hits more consistently. I don't know whether it's the, just the, the, the reticle or something. I found the thermal a bit was off. I don't know why. I, I, I did try it out for a little bit, and I, I was missing my shots. So instantly, I in me head, taking it straight <laughs> off, and we'll get, we'll get the variable zoom back on. Uh, that's fair enough. Um, all right, let's talk about your favorite place to drop, then. Where, where do you like dropping in Warzone? It, it, it all depends on where the, you know, where the plane's coming across, but there's the hangars. It's not an actual place named on the map, but like there's a certain area where it's just you know, hangar hangers. That's a good place. Gets loads of people. There's a little area outside of stadium where it's just a couple of packed houses together, which gets a, a lot of people dropping there when the plane's near. Mm -hmm. Yard and Superstore. They're they're the main ones. They're the main four. 
on yeah, oh, wait, prison drop oh, every really? time <laughs> every time if you if the plane's over prison you drop in prison <laughs> kicks off Love I've, it. I've never actually done that i may have to i may have to oh um, you're missing out I'm a, I'm a hangers player which isn't named on the map but I feel I feel like everybody yeah. I know ends up hangers, going there. Yeah, hangers is good. Hangers is good, but prison shafts to do it, man. <laughs> you can't miss out on a prison drop. Uh, all right, from from the prison drop to uh, maybe your top tip for Warzone. What's something you suggest for anybody out there trying to get into it, trying to get better? Top tip: if, if you're trying to get wins, don't do what most pro players do. And as soon as you see someone, don't just start shooting at them and run at them. <laughs> Because I know all your all your favourite streamers and players would do that. You're not as good as them. <laughs> so if you want to stay alive <laughs> and get wins, get a bit closer to them, play a bit more, play a bit smarter, and then pick your shot and team shoot with with your boys, whatever squad you're with. You got to make sure you team shoot. Awesome. All right, team shooting sounds like a good tip to me. Uh, thank you very much for that, Dave. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, no problem, Bryce. Thank you. Awesome. See you soon. One, one, oh, one shot, now the future is yours. Go! Well, there you go. Fantastic catching up with Dave, as always. Make sure to check him out on his Twitch. He always is streaming either CDL Games or Warzone, so it's always a good watch with him. But from that into our next section, and this week there's been an awful lot of buzz about a very particular place on the Warzone map. It's new. It's here. Let's jump into our map highlight. Okay, for our map highlight this week, there is only one place we could be going, and that is to Bunker 11. Now, to get Bunker 11 open, you need to follow some steps. My first advice, though, is to go and bring up the map that I found on Reddit here. It will be linked in the description. This is what I use to get through it. It has not only all of the phone locations, but also the location of the bunker, and... It will have the translations for the Russian number you're going to need. So, once you have that up, let's continue. First things first, you're going to have to drop in as a team. I suggest doing this on Plunder. It's not really feasible to do it in the main modes. You need the time, you need the respawns. Anything goes wrong, it will be chalked. So, first things first, I suggest you split up into at least two or one and try to hit the activation phones. You need to listen for a ringing phone, find it, and then listen to the message. Then you'll find some beeps and there will be numbers read out in Russian. Now you have to listen to these. You've got the phonetics broken down on that page as well. So listen to them in order, figure out which ones they are, and then look at your map and figure out which phones you have to go to. One word of advice. Don't do what I did. Make sure you do these in order. You've got to get every single one in order, touch them all, and then make your way to Bunker 11. My suggestions for getting these all done do mean vehicles. They are spread out all over the map. You could be going to every single corner, so be very, very careful. I also suggest, in some of the more difficult ones like downtown, sending more bodies there rather than splitting up because there could be teams camping there and you don't want to have to keep dying and keep coming back to try to get it. You will run out of time. Trust me, I did four or five times. Once you've got all of these done, then you can head to the bunker. Be careful, nobody's tracking you and nobody's camping it. But all you got to do is go to the keypad and it will open the first door. And as you run down, you will find a lot of crates and stuff and goodies to pick up. Whether or not this is a viable tactic for Warzone, I don't know, but it is certainly a fun Easter egg. You will also end up finding the legendary MP7, which you can pick up and it will give you the blueprint for it. You can do this with every single one of your team members. So just swap it back out for your normal gun. They pick it up, they unlock it. Now, realistically, all you've got to do is explore the bunker. There are many things to find in here, such as a big red button, a computer reset, a countdown, and what looks like a nuclear warhead being assembled. This is a very easy way of doing it, but hopefully you should be able to just jump straight in and work it out. You're not going to get it first time unless you're very, very lucky, but just keep grinding until it's done. And that should be everything for the Bunker 11 Easter Egg. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you get it easily. Thank you. This has been the Map Highlight. Well, there you go. There's our Map Highlight. It's complicated, but hopefully that helps you out a little bit in getting into Bunker 11. 
And I know it's going to be a big journey for some of you, but keep trying and eventually you'll get there. That's our show for this week. That's the More Zone. And of course, make sure you check out our socials, which you can see on screen right now. And make sure you put those top five clips in. I'm looking forward to seeing them all week. It's pretty much my highlight of my week at the moment, trying to be as good as you lot. But thank you so much for watching. I've been Alan Bryce. This has been More Zone. And we'll see you next time. One, 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 one.